What is up, my gentle humans? Welcome, howdy. My name is Dinah Chu here at Slow Gaze. You have stumbled upon Slow Gaze Upon, and we are on day 10 or 11, I think. I've previously uploaded a blue look, a green look, and a purple look, filming halfway through about a fully red look, and let me show you a picture, what I had come up with. I wanted to title it, When a Mood Calls, You Answer, because the red mood was strong. I was so excited to film it. And then of course there were technology issues, a whole bevy of things came up. I wasn't able to salvage it and I wasn't able to redo the makeup and still work my job. I still have a nine to five and this is like all in my spare time. Please forgive me, I am not going to redo that look. Um, it was nice and I captured a moment, but I didn't think that looking over the footage, it would be very groundbreaking. I basically just smudged a lot of red over my eyes and I was using the Marc Jacobs Fine Wine Eyeliner. I love, love, love this color. It is so flattering, but also really pointed. Like it's a pointed burgundy. It's not like trying to be burgundy, but truly it's a brown. Then from this palette here, the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. Yes, I did rejig it. Shade right here brought everything together, almost like fire, like embers. It was so gorgeous. Palette that inspired it all. This is the Kinder It Experience Chanel. Like looking at that, it is such a muted three-tone brown so muted and then you add this pop and all of a sudden it becomes sultry and full. The real star of the show was this shade from the Sunset palette from Natasha Denona. This is sitting in with a bunch of its other sisters from several other palettes that I owned. And you can see one's already missing, but this one shade here, that was the red look. Um, I'm so new to YouTube that I haven't had one full year yet. So I don't really know the ups and downs of viewership or what people are looking for at what months. I can kind of guess, but I can tell that viewership is certainly down, which is interesting. I think it's because there's so much more content that is competing with my content. Vlogmas is in full force, and so if you're interested in some other things or you're looking for very specific videos, let's say tech gifts uh, for your grandson, like that totally trumps me doing red eyeshadow all over. I will continue to follow my own gumptions. I'm going to put that small mini challenge of mine to bed and hopefully that would have just inspired you to look back into your stash and revisit some colorful looks otherwise you're here for a fragrance tour let me show you this very scary bag um it feels like it's about to burst and it sounds like it's full of treasure and jewels which it is uh this is all of my perfume i have way more than maybe you're expecting i should not assume what you're expecting of me if you've seen my declutters before or have been peeking into my home through my home vlog, um, I do have a lot of stuff and I am quite overwhelmed with stuff. I'm still feeling like doing a 30 day challenge where you declutter every day up to about 500 pieces. I feel like I that wouldn't be enough. You know, that's that's the level that I'm at. Perfumes are pieces that are not only functional, they are art objects in their own right. And people keep them long after they have expired. And I love how treasured and jewel-like they look if they're designed well. Some of them, it's just so beyond me. And there are ones that look like impossible shapes of bodies that are truncated at the head and just look like beheaded dolls that haunt you. I know if you are new to my channel, thank you for sitting with me through all these initial ramblings. I'm so happy you clicked on this video and joined me here for the month of December. 2020. My channel is about slowing down and taking stock of what you have both outwards and inwards. Gazing inwards is kind of my tagline now. So if you're interested in sticking around, please give me a subscribe, like, you name it. Um, I'm happy to connect with you. So let's dive in. Okay, with all of these, I'm going to try to tell you what it is. A little portrait, a vignette of what I think it smells like. And this is highly subjective and I'm gonna just talk about it in very like conceptual painterly terms. Don't take it so literally. You can very easily go onto websites that breaks down like notes and dry downs and categories, all of that good stuff. I love nerding out, out about that good stuff, but I, I usually take it in and I don't know how to like give it to you yet. So maybe I'll just paint a little portrait of what I think these smell like for you give a small anecdote if it makes sense, um, but then I'll tell you whether or not I would repurchase it with my own money. When I was younger, I would fragrance shop with my dad a lot. Uh, I lived in Hong Kong for 10 years, and during that time, like I wasn't big into makeup at all. I didn't even wear makeup. 
I wasn't big into fashion. I loved looking at fashion, but I just had so many body issues that shopping wasn't fun for me in that way. My dad and I would walk the malls if you've been to Hong Kong or if you live there. I mean, there's a mall at every train station basically. So it's a way of life. It's not necessarily what you think of with a Dillard's and a Macy's and anchor stores and box stores and what you think of here in the United States. Um, but they were very luxury experiences and you'd pass through and there'd be just a lot of energy and a lot of stuff that would be accessible. Like I could walk to a Gucci and walk to a convenience store and a McDonald's within like three feet. You know what I mean? That's the kind of world that we were living in and he would take me like record shopping. Um, we'd go to bookstores a lot. He'd want me to become a woman, I think. I think he was trying to just help me dip my toes into stores that I was maybe shy about going into or self-conscious about. He just wanted me to have a worldly experience worldly experience um, in this shopping arena. And he wasn't saying like, you should buy this. Um, I grew up really frugal and you know, we were came from a middle class, working class family. Both my parents worked really, really hard to get to where they were. So we weren't spending money on like luxury. He didn't buy a lot for himself. My mom didn't even wear perfume, but I think my dad was doting on me and trying to also get me to like understand luxury a little bit. So that's the one rant I will go on. Let me show you some product. So I did have the Flora Gucci. This is slightly in a timeline. Um, Flora Gucci was one of, I think several that I had. I don't know if it came in a set of three or five, um, but they were all floral notes. And this is one of the ones that I didn't like as much, you can see. I think I used up one completely. One is down on its last legs and it's somewhere in this house, I couldn't even find it. And then this one is Glamorous Magnolia. It's even missing a small little black ribbon on top. Love how handheld this is, it feels really adequate. It feels like an adequate luxury item. And the glass cap is just a nice touch. It's not too clunky. It does feel light and fresh and airy. And then it has that tint of like sea foam, sea glass blue that just differentiates all of them. I think one of them was a little more green, one maybe tinted pink, I don't quite remember. This is, to me, when you go out and you see a bulbous peony in your garden, like one where its head is so full of petals, it's drooping, and then you're watching this peony and then all of a sudden it starts to wake up and it actually like comes off of its stalk and it comes at you and it walks towards you and in this like fit of surrealism, you see a rainbow jump out of its head and you see pearls start to fall from the sky. It just smells like that. It smells like that. Cool. That's the kind of painterly, supernatural, strange portrait I'm talking about. Um, again, don't take it very literally. I don't know how you could. It feels hyper feminine. It feels out in the world like you're smelling true flowers, but there is something magical in there. There's something round. There's something opulent about it. Um, it's a really round scent. It's not really just fresh and stringent. So I do like it, but I don't wear a lot of florals as you'll see. So this is a time cap floral. Okay, this one is going to kick off a bunch of other ones that I don't have in hand, but I will just briefly tell you about other fragrances that I've been hunting because I love them so much and in my scent memory I would repurchase. Oh, so I would not repurchase this Gucci Flora by Gucci Glamorous Magnolia. I thought it was an eau de toilette. Yeah, it is. 50 milliliters. So um, I would not purchase this or the set again. This next one, <laughs> pretty sure my dad bought this for me uh, in a set in a duty-free airport. So I did not splurge on Gucci back then necessarily. I started much more with something like this. And this is, I think, the Maria Sharapova. Yes, the tennis goddess, eau de parfum. So it's actually quite strong by Parallax fragrances, etc., etc. So I've actually used quite a bit of this up. I think this is reminiscent of like a Paris Hilton, almost an Escada kind of fragrance back in the early 2000s. If you know what I mean, it's like a tinted pink or like corally sunrise color. There's even this embossed silver floral note on the outside. Heavy glass top and then I mean, I think this bottom is glass and then the top is actually plastic. Maria Sharapova's initials. Ah, this is even more floral, but it is definitely tropical. Like you take 
a, okay, here, are you ready? Are you ready? This to me is a fruit basket on the side of a Greek island that is over, like it's erupting with fruit. It's like a cornucopia in the summer of fruit and it's on a Greek island, but it's huge. Like the Greek island is this big and the fruit is this big. It's like Mount Olympus, but miniature. And then the fruit is just overflowing. The sun is right over this. It's super ripe. It's like kind of caramelizing some of the fruit that's too close to the sun and then in the valley, the humans are toiling in a giant greenhouse below. There might be like a small dolphin on the edge of this picture too. So it's very fresh. It feels like summer petty. It feels like it's sweet and it's going to just bring you up into the heavens. It's not gonna dry you down. There's nothing too deep in this um, that I remember. A lovely 16 year old scent, if you will. Okay, so the other ones I wanted to mention are Burberry London for Women, powdery note. That one I think of as like a librarian taking her son's SAT test for the third time, just to like get herself familiarized with all of the things he has to do just to like teach him how to do the SAT test. And then she's late for brunch. Love it, but it's kind of powdery and a little bit older. Then there's the Gucci, I think it's two, like Gucci, Gucci two in Roman numerals. That one was a very black currant or blackberry heavy, yes, blackberry forward fragrance. And I had it in a very small bottle and I would wear it to my GCSE tests, A levels. I don't know what it would be here in the States. Uh, I don't think we quite had the same public exam situation, but I always put it to my friends here in the States. Like if you've ever heard of newts or owls from Harry Potter, it was like that. They had two levels of like public exams all in the great hall. It was like that. So I'd wear it to all my exams and it helped me like, and I would wear it studying. So I kept thinking that the scent memory would help me remember what I was studying and I wouldn't wear it on any other occasion. So I thought that was fun, but I used the whole bottle up and I miss it. I miss it a lot and it's discontinued. I think I should continue on this Gucci train because I have a couple more from my past here. And this is the Gucci Flora. So I think this is Gucci Flora and then this is Flora by Gucci. Um, and this has like a lot more spring scents. This must have been the original. And this is also an eau de, does it even say? Oh, it's an eau de toilette as well. This is the kind of ribbon I was talking about. It, it was elasticized around the neck and then it had these little baubles um, in their distinctive like bamboo aglets. Love that. I love how squat this bottle is. It does feel a little bit different from the other character. Okay, so this one actually feels, and it is very, very floral. So I would not repurchase this. If I had to describe it to you, it is also like a rose awakening in the middle of a bed that's on top of a waterfall. And this rose is awakening from its dream. And then it realizes that it's on this massive mattress and it's falling down this gorgeous like waterfall that starts to evaporate before it even hits the pool water down below and it falls slower than the mattress so the mattress falls away and the rose is lifted by this mist and it starts to rise even as it knows it's about to die. That's this. Next up, Gucci. Um, this is just Gucci by Gucci. <laughs> and I think uh, I was spot on with the Gucci by Gucci, but like two, that was the very black very forward one. This is a whole b different ball game altogether. Actually, all of these are. So, I mean, I guess I liked Gucci fragrances. This is also a purchase that I think I got with my dad. This is an eau de toilette. It has very heritage Gucci trimmings. You can see that horse saddle foothold, I think. I don't know if it's the brindle or what bridle. I'm not good with horse terms. And then it has that faux gold trim and then these frosted glass stripes that I think are reminiscent of their webbing around their bags and the trimmings around their bags, especially their luggage and duffel bags. This is far more squat. It seems really traditional, really kind of not trying to be masculine, but it does feel like something in the old Italian way. And I love that old Italian glamour. This is so much more sensual amber-based, it's deep, it is 
really gonna react to the heat of your skin. This to me is like a hot summer day one. Let me take a scent and then we'll bring you to the uh, portrait I'm about to paint. Oh man, okay, so <laughs> I think of this as actually very human, a very human scent. I'm not gonna anthropomorphize like a flower again. I feel like this is a very effeminate man in his early 70s with such a hard tan that he looks like a burnished turkey that's been glazed by a thousand suns. And he basically has like three necklaces of gold, like gold chains around his neck. There's droplets of sweat that are standing on his white chest hairs. And he has like a bead choker that's made out of like puka shells. He's sitting like in a green lawn chair on the edge of a plaza that's fully sun drenched. It's like high noon and he's ordering some gelato and some cannolis and a little bit of caramel to drizzle on top of all of himself so that someone can come lick it off. Yeah. Ooh, it's decadent. I love it. I actually really enjoy this like old glamour touch of powdery uh, ness, but it is really sultry and sweaty. I love it. I might repurchase this again, but once I get through it, we'll see. I think there are other ones that I would repurchase over this. I'm not gonna say that I don't like it. These are all from my past past, so I will be moving more chronologically as I mentioned. These have been sitting around in an old crusty like bathroom for a while, um, and by a while I literally mean like years and years untouched. So I tried to like revive them and bring them back into the fold a little bit. So please excuse the state that some of these are in. I feel like I should have dusted them better, but I, alas, I did not. This one, if you've seen my home vlog, I mentioned this very quickly, but what a special bottle. I think it's special because this cap here um, actually comes off and it just looks like a teething thing. Like if you're teething, this is exactly what I would want to put in my baby's mouth, but I wouldn't do it, right? <laughs> like it is so beautiful and it brings me back to my childhood. There is something there, the rest of this. So this is by Sarah Jessica Parker. It is Covet. And the way they put the title on here, it's like it's a plaque, like 10 Downey Street or whatever, almost like you're going to this destination. And then on top of this, they also have that gold embossed, almost like, I guess, a braided chain. Not sure if I can get close enough to see it. Yeah, there it is. So this chain embossing, or it's like a sweat sweater knit, I'm not quite sure. And then the liquid itself is like radioactive piss green. I don't mean that in any poor way. I actually really enjoy the vibrancy of this, the way that she did her ad, she was in, it was, a, was it a purple dress? Anyway, she did some good color stuff that brings back memories of this color. So it just felt really on brand to me. It felt special and different. And it felt also in that squat Gucci way, it felt like it, it could sit with Gucci and it wouldn't feel cheap. Whereas when you see something like the Maria Sharapova one, this looks cheap this does not as much. And so this cap again would just sit on top of this and just click on and it would sit kind of flush here. It does have a little bit of lip and then it has SJP, her initials, also stamped on but in a nice sans serif. So you wouldn't be able to like press this down. Um, and then it looks kind of like a water faucet as well. There's, it looks like New York. Like there's so much in here that I, I really appreciate. And the smell itself, if you can imagine, <laughs> Okay, so this one I know more intimately because I've been using it actually these past few days. If you imagine a mosquito in a fine frilly dress that's ordering limoncello at a bar, is on their third drink, and also just ordered calamari, like the type that has strong salt and pepper flakes, finishes its meal, calls a cab, but instead of a cab, a long black limo comes up and the mosquito in this beautiful frock goes into the limousine and it drives away. Reminiscent of the citronella candle, that's where the mosquito came in. But I mean, it also kind of feels really delicate and it feels like it's a little snooty and it has something going on. I'm gonna speed along because there really are so many to get through. Would I repurchase this? No, I wouldn't, but I will appreciate the heck out of this whilst I have it. This is diesel fuel for life and I think, um, it says for women only, hate that. Diesel is a fashion brand. I do enjoy their stuff. They're known for their like gritty urban take. Think guess plus like guess jeans 
plus a little bit of rag and bone. It has this like chain that's supposed to be a little bit more grungy. Um, I actually don't mind the styling of this. This fishnet stocking is obscuring the gold on the bottle. I like it, but in theory it's nice, it, but it does slip off really easily. And then diesel is on the cap. So I think this is more like if you walk into Zara and buy one of their fragrances, this is the standard. Definitely an eau de toilette. Quite a sizable like investment on their part. I think there are a lot of little bits and pieces to this that I'm enjoying. Looks like a flask. Ooh, this one feels like a really cinnamony pie that you just dig your face into. Like you don't even have arms to pick this up with. You literally just smush your face into and your nostrils are filled with this goopy raspberry plum, deep stone fruits and cinnamon, like cinnamon spice. And it feels really earthy as well. I would add a giant wood table to that picture. I think it's actually well balanced. It makes me want to smell it over and over again. I don't think it's only for women. I would recommend this to my like 16 year old self. I actually would recommend this over this to my 16 year old self. So it's intoxicating, but you can tell that this is more of a, um, a cheaper scent because once you wear it, it's not as complex as some of these other ones. It does have that like, not metallic thinness, but it has a thinness and not a larger body to it that after a while, um, I'm sure some people might get a headache from it or it feels a little bit insincere. Okay, we're going closer to modern day Diana. This is something that I bought right when it came out, the Glossier U. And this is supposed to be like a thumb print spot so you're holding basically a very round flask but then you can actually hold it and it's supposed to fit to you that's the idea and then it has that red cap that is now you know so synonymous with glossier yes they were able to put millennial pink in here um, but the red does elevate it and it starts to speak a little bit more to the body it's not so milky toast just looking at this bottle there's nothing special about it i don't think it's a very luxe fragrance um this has a soft kind of matte finish but it looks like something again that i would put in my mouth if i were a third grader maybe first grader it's not like a luxe thing it's more of like an art thing and there's their idea is all about it fitting to you i hardly use this and i would never buy it again but i did walk into a cafe once wearing this and the person at the register asked me what I was wearing. And I don't think that has ever happened for any of these other fragrances. There are a few times where they're like, hmm, that's kind of nice or, you know, some kind of comment, but this was so specific. He wanted to know because he would buy it for his girlfriend. And I think it would attest to the, the whole like, this fits to you idea that, you know, all those Palo Santo wooden sticks that people are burning either for meditation purposes or just to clarify the home. If you can imagine someone lighting one of those, sitting it into an upturned and empty oyster shell that's iridescent and it's kind of throwing magical rainbows on the ceiling. Alongside that is a cup, a red Solo cup that someone had burnt at 2B pencil and put it inside the Solo cup. So these two are reacting to together and the smell of like pencil shavings comes to your nostrils. It's definitely woody, but it has a, a little bit of juiciness, freshness. I think it's actually quite leaning towards the feminine, a little bit too floral for my taste. I know I only described the wooden notes in my little picture there, but I think it's a pretty well balanced and well blended thing, but it's just not for me. It's not one that I want to like use as my signature. You know, I want something way more bold and something that I can sink my teeth into. Um, this feels like just an everyday good smelling uh, fragrance. Yeah, that's all I want to say about that. I'm gonna pull up this Palo Santo Under Aurora oil. It is a fragrance oil and it has black spruce, Palo Santo, and patchouli. Jojoba oil and other essential oils to make it smell like this. Very strong. So I've been using this up. I bought this in Baltimore, so I've had it maybe three, four years now. And I am gonna put this one on. I love layering this and I do put it straight up onto my pulse points. Someone described this to me as fresh hamster cage. Shavings have just been refurbished. It does have a slight like menthol-y feeling. So it does make me, when I smell it and I inhale deeply with my whole lungs, not just my shallow breathing lungs, I do feel the need to like open myself up and like 
start to relax and take in the whole breath. So I like that for a practice. I do associate it with calm now and grounding. It is a very one note hardwood smell. There's no warmth in it. The warmth is basically coming from my own skin, but it's a very sharp smell, almost like citrusy or how you would think of peppermint as a smell. That segues pretty perfectly into this replica by Margiela, the House of Margiela uh, Blur Filter. So you might be familiar with their larger fragrances, the ones that actually are fragrances, um, and these are tinted most of the time, sometimes they're not, but this one is different, and it's not just a mini size. This one is a oil, um, at least as far as I can tell. Packaging looks basically the same, except this is stouter, but it is something that is called a filter. So it says filter name blur, and it's meant to be mixed with stuff on the skin. So I would put this down. So that came out pretty strongly. I don't know if you can see, ah, right there, <laughs> just right there. It is something that I can blur out and it's soaked up by my skin. Because normally when you see perfume come out of a bottle, it's just giant cloud of fine mist. This literally squirts down and you're supposed to rub it out and it's supposed to blur out whatever else you put on. So I bought it in tandem with the this. I thought it was nice because this is a very gourmand fragrance and this is supposed to be very sweet, chestnutty, woody, a little smoky. I know this is a favorite of a lot of people's. And so when I read that fragrance description, I was like, okay, this cotton and musky notes will help dampen all of that sweetness. I think it does. I think it blurs but I don't think it's worth buying. It's one of those that, you know, if there's a fragrance that you really don't like as much, or sometimes you're trying to mix, maybe if you're the alchemist, like maybe you'll like this. Oh, okay, so I do have a, a scent like idea for this one. Imagine you were doing the laundry and you found under a giant pile of the fluffiest Turkish towels, um, this one lost teddy bear, like a little stuffed toy that you used to have back when you were like two years old and you had never found it. You had lost it and you had never found it until now. You pick it up and it smiles at you and it looks ragged and part of its eyes falling out and it's a little disgruntled, but it's been sleeping in this giant tower of soft Turkish white towels for the past, what, 20 some years and it's been fine, it's fine. And your heart swells and you take it up and you give it a little sniff and it smells just like clean laundry and all is fine with the world. To me, it's not worth the squeeze. It does feel like a lot of money <laughs> that I threw into this and I just don't know what to use it with. I've tried it with a few other perfumes I forget which, to be honest, but there are stronger and better noses out there than mine who have already developed really well-balanced fragrances that I do not need to go in and start to tinker with them myself. So I would not recommend this, but I would highly recommend By the Fireplace by Margiela. So wonderful. This is now mixed in with the Palo Santo as well. I'm getting such yummy hits of that smoky woodiness plus a little bit of that hazelnut, like think of a Nutella spread, mm, baked cookies and a fireplace going. Like there's really nothing else. I will use this up. I will use this up and I will repurchase this till the end of time. Uh, I just love yummy fragrances. If you like this, I hope you try the product candy. I love that one as well. And Mugler's Muse, not their angel fragrance that comes in a star bottle that has so many different iterations. I'm talking about the one that comes mm -hmm. almost in like this kind of capsule with a star on top. That smells like hazelnuts and beautiful things as well. But I love this one more than all the other ones I mentioned, even Prada Candy, which is still one of my favorites and I actually used up that entire bottle and I've never repurchased it. I'm looking to repurchase that but in the midnight iteration. This might trump it still because of that smokiness. This feels a little more raw, the Prada feels a little bit more polished and it does have a lot of complexity but in the end they're just yummy scents um, that I want, want to snuggle up with. I'm not even gonna do a scent memory for this one or like a little portrait for this one because as I mentioned, the smokiness and the hazelnut yumminess just feels really on point. I've decided not
not to split this up into two videos. I think I would just be sad that someone would have to go through two videos. I don't know. This feels like two movements in a piano piece, so this is a perfect time to like break intermission, go get your hot dog at the concession stand, come back with beer in hand and milk duds in the other, and we'll commence the last section. This is kind of the most exciting section for me, definitely more complex. Now that I have a lot more disposable income, late 20s, early 30s, like this is a different collection from what I had just shown you. So with that, I'm going to start with this Narciso Rodriguez for her. And look at this bottle. I just can't get over how beautiful a statuesque idea. Like, let's use this as an example. Um, also bringing back that Gucci one. It feels like if you were to think of the symbol of a perfume bottle, um, some people or a lot of people might think of like a rectangular base and an equally rectangular like anvil shaped cap that sits on top of a little neck and that's about it. And so what I mean by uh, this contemporary take, it feels like a contemporary art take on this idea of a perfume bottle. There's no tchotchkes, there's no things or ribbons hanging from this neck. It does have an ample base that feels thought out in glass. It does have that like mystique. Glossier use millennial pink harkens back to this, but I think this came out a lot earlier. Nice chunky top reveals a black eye, like a little black dropper. And I really love that surprise. It looks sophisticated, it looks chic, um, and it's still in that minimal realm. And then the cap itself has that creamy, almost like a jelly pudding look to it. It just feels really balanced to me. And so I love that. And then once you smell it, it's not what to me it looks like. Ooh, it's kind of soapy. It is slightly, slightly powdery, but it's also musky. Ooh, this one's hard. Maybe I'm getting a little burnt out from the scents. Let me take a sniff of my sweater. So I think I have a scent memory that just came to me. If you can imagine it's fall, it's 2014. You are in a tweed mini skirt. It's really a beautiful mini skirt. You got it in a thrift store and you have a little leather jacket on and you have a long scarf. It's not necessarily that warm a scarf, but it's one that kind of decorates your neck. You have long hair and you're sitting in a library waiting for a poetry slam to, to start. You have people in the back row with cough drop wrappers, sounds. You're kind of getting sweaty. The cheese plate that's free on the side table, you can kind of smell that. And then you're sitting there with your program and your legs are getting sweaty. You're sticking a little bit to the wooden furniture that was provided and your legs are encased in some nylons, but they're rubbing together a little bit. They're uncomfortable as you criss and cross your legs waiting for the speakers to arrive. And that's the kind of sweaty, uncomfortable moment, um, but also a really beautiful moment that I'm seeing when I smell this. Yes, I just described this as leg sweat, nylon leg sweat, but I think it's, it's kind of part of that dark academia feeling or just a little bit hopeful, like you're waiting for something to begin and you're ready and you've kind of arrived as a woman or a person who wears that kind of attire. You're in like a grand setting with high vaulted ceilings and I just see that as like a turning point. Like you're about to hear some beautiful poetry or something that's really moving. It's an artful fragrance. It feels really academic in some way. Um, and it's not quite the gourmand or the like cozy interior home feeling that I get from Replica. This is a, I'm out and about, I'm with other people. I want them to smell me that's the scent that I get from this. So I would buy this again. This is in my arsenal of like wardrobe scents. I would pick this up and use it every so often. I guess whenever I go to the moth or whatever. Regime de Fleur, Chloe Sauvigny. Yes, I bought this just for the packaging. I don't do that too much, but I do have two examples here that I will tell you about. And this is one of them. I mean, look at this giant pearl straight out of a Botticelli painting as well as a cheap Nashville beauty supply store that's selling wigs for $9.99. Like I feel like I would get this hair bobble and I would see this in a Botticelli painting on the birth of Venus. Like it just feels really high and lowbrow. And then this is in their typical like 
regime de fleur, ornate font. It feels really scripty. It's gorgeous. Um, and then the crest that they usually use is cleverly transformed into that rose. And this is a primarily rose fragrance. It is called Little Flower. It's something that I um, I simply cannot use. And I know I say that and it's, it's awful. But why would I have something like this? But I love Chloe so much. And I wanted to know what her expression of this perfume would be. And it is truly a little flower. It feels kind of diminutive, like something's giggling at you from afar. If I had to give it a portrait, I would say it's like a little uh, Danish boy that, that has overalls on and is giggling from, from like a, the back of a hedge in a labyrinth that you can't quite find him, but you can hear him and he's cackling at you um, a little surreptitiously. And it does feel jovial, kind of buoyant. It's sunny, like it has some citrus in there, but it's mainly floral, floral, floral. And they are like small blossoms, like small rose tea blossoms versus those giant heady like peony blossoms. I think it's a nice summery spring scent, but it's so one note to me. I know there's a lot more in there. There's a big blend of stuff, but to me, it's just like flowers. So I can't do it. Because I had this out, I will show you what this is and you may already recognize it. It is from Chanel. Number five, the classic classics fragrance, but this is just their special eau de toilette. I bought it because of the bottle, folks. I don't love Chanel number five. I bought it for my mom before she's I think she used it, but more out of like, I have this, I should use this. She's very practical like that. So I hope one day I could give this to her and she'd actually use it, but right now it's in my hands and it's it's okay. I mean, the bottle itself I thought was jewel-like, you know, it has those mitered corners and mitered edges. So it does feel like a jewel. And then up in, in the light, it has that pure ruby red look. I'm not quite sure how to show you. I'm attracted to anything red. We have a red microwave, we have a red vacuum. All of those things work in conjunction to like my idea of life. I don't know why. Silver tone CC logo. And then when you pull it up, it's that silver spritzer top. So everything's working in concert. I'm really enjoying the just specialness of this on a vanity, I think it's it's perfect. It's just perfect. And the fragrance has always been just too powdery for me. Yes, there is some like v vanilla. There's a little bit of that warm citrus, like a little bit of bergamot overall. And I don't know if it's the musk at the end or if it's the, the wood at the heart. It's almost like talcum powder. When I think of powderiness, I do think of patchouli and I think of beads. So if I had to give this a little scent portrait, it would be just if you zoom in, in your mind, onto these gorgeous hands, these really beautiful, wrinkly, tanned hands, and they're sorting through these pearls for these plastic beads. So it's the opposite. Usually you look for precious jewels or stones, or in this case, pearls, in, in the midst of like a lot of plastic or uh, fake beads, but this is the opposite. I feel like there's so much decadence, but in this case, it's the opposite. These hands are sorting through these beautiful opulent like orbs that came from the sea looking for these fake glass beads that are sitting in with the rest of the pile. You can hear the, them gently clicking together, a mesmerizing moment, and you're just never quite sure whether or not they'll ever find those plastic beads that are hiding within the pearls as if they were meant to be there. I hope you are rationing your milk duds because at this point, I still have five fragrances to go. So if you're still with me, Thank you for sticking around. I'm gonna introduce you now to Burberry the Beat. Oh my God, I love, love, love this scent. And already you can tell it's like a special little flask, a nice case of white on top, kind of like a stormtrooper's armor. And then the cap lends that idea as well. It feels kind of mod, a little bit 60s, like a pillbox hat. I love these smooth curves. I love the checkerboard uh, from the Burberry plaid. That's so iconic to them. I like how they blew up the scale of that pattern. And then on the side, it, they even went as far as to put, and I think it really does make this bottle, this little decorative 
piece of faux suede in white with a tag that says Burberry in their classic font. I think it's really nice. The beat sits right here. It doesn't cheapen the pattern. You don't really see it from afar, but it's there. So it feels really modern. It feels fresh and it feels like a, a woman, I think, or a person that is holding something decorative or that's kind of running for the train. I like the asymmetry of it. There's a lot. I think there's something really special here. When it was released, it came out with the actress and model Agnes Dane. I think she was really hot for a second. She would wear like Mary Janes and she had this platinum pixie and she had these doll eyes and full lips and um, she was quite tall. So I think that kind of embodied that cool girl look. She looked great in plaid. This to me is a very like peppercorny scent, but also quite floral. So if I were to pick a floral, I think this might be up there on the roster, but it does have some special like sharp notes. I think there's a little bit of grapefruit. I do think that the pepperiness, um, pink pepper, that comes through. And so it's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit fresh and zingy. And then in the end, it's like floral. So it has that pep in its step. It's not going to dry down and feel at all flowery or powdery. Um, okay, the scent idea that I'm thinking of is set in London. So if you imagine London, like the wet streets of London, and it's a gloomy gray day, there's a little sprinkling of rain. And if you imagine a unicorn in the middle of the street, just blocking all traffic, blocking everything, and everyone has stopped to look at this unicorn. The unicorn is special not only because it is a unicorn and it has a horn on its head. Oh my God, where am I going? It is, it is actually peach colored. God, I say this stuff and it's just like, I wish I could paint the picture for you in my mind. <laughs> and I'm trying to do that, but bear with me. The unicorn is not white, it is peach colored. It is a nice ripe peach color. That's the end of that. I don't really know why that's giving me this. Cannot help you connect those two feelings, but um, <laughs> again, that there we are. Let's continue with this. I really like this uh, bright, peppy, almost fruity train. This is the D&G, so Dolce & Gabbana La Imperatrice. Like, I cannot pronounce that. Please excuse me. Bought in a duty-free in Paris. It is so juicy. It feels like guava, it feels like oranges, papaya, mango, some watermelon, like it feels really, really summery. And then it has like a heart of maybe deeper berries and maybe just a touch sweet vanilla. So there's nothing too like deep or sophisticated about this. It does work well with a summer day and I love that. And it's light enough for me to do like a whole dousing on myself and without getting sick of it. So this is part of their tarot series. I think they have a bunch that are kind of inspired by like the Seven of Cups. Please excuse me if I'm wrong with that. Feels statuesque as well. Really tall bottle. Reels, feels fresh and kind of nonchalant in the Parisian way. Um, and it feels effortless. This tall cap is really, really heavy. It's almost like a Reese's cup because it has those um, grooves in it. And it, it reminds me of, you know, Edward Muybridge, is it? The guy who invented the repeating horse that would sit within a circle and you would like watch from the outside and spin it and through little slats you'd see the horse in motion. So I like that it, it reveals the black spritzer um, with the little white eye and everything seems kind of in concert. It does have that nice like bold graphic look from the logo but then it has the delicate a lot of white space the serif font there so i feel like it's kind of flagship it, it's sophisticated it looks like a pinterest dream instagrammable yes is it yummy yes i would buy it again in a heartbeat i hope they never discontinue it this one is not my absolute favorite i will not buy this again i was obsessed with this for a while and finally pulled the trigger and this is the tom ford neroli portofino it is in their smallest size, so that's why it looks so small in comparison to this guy here. And uh, it's fine, it's so fine. Transport yourself to a place that's highly sunny, blue azure waters are everywhere, very citrusy, like strong citrus, and then a little bit soapy because of the aqua. It smells like sunscreen, it has that little bit of soapy bite. It definitely takes me straight to sunscreen, straight to a beach. And if a scent can do that, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but it kind of curtails off into this soft, 
soapiness. It's, it really is like you're clean, you're mean, and you're fierce on a beach. It invites you to show some skin. It invites you to put, put on your best white linen shirt, like feel really crisp and just lay out in the sun and do absolutely nothing. I don't know if a scent portrait is actually coming strongly to me. Don't really see anything when I smell this. I just see kind of colors. Try to cleanse my palette a little bit and let's try one more time. Okay, I'm gonna have to pass on this one. This isn't giving me a really strong scent profile. Love the bottle, love the gold moment. And then the caps are very iconic. The top cap, the width of it does match the shoulders of this bottle. So unlike the others where usually the cap is much smaller and there's like a little neck, I like that the neck and the shoulders and the hat per se, they're all kind of in line and it feels more monumental than it does statuesque. It feels like it's part of architecture than a freestanding statue. And then on top, there's that square Tom Ford, really gorgeous gold moment. Like he knows exactly what he's doing, or at least the marketing company behind it and all of the research and development. Um, this color, it might not be picking up on camera, but it's not just a one tone blue. It has a lot of green. There's like some shifts to it, just like water. All in all, it gives me a, a fine experience. I just don't love the scent experience as much for the price. Not even gonna go into prices in this video if you haven't inferred. I'm definitely more about the uh, dreaming aspect than the practical. Plus you can look it up pretty easily anyway. So I'm gonna end this video with two of my absolute favorites. These two I will purchase until the day I pass. They're my signature scents. If I had to really pick my two favorite fall winter scents, it would be these two. And my favorite summer scents, it would be this one. So back to what I'm holding in my hand now. This is the Burberry London for men. And I mentioned that I had the Burberry London for women at one point. Um, and then at the time, I remember my dad buying that one for me and I actually liked it a lot. I used it all up, but then he had bought the one for men for himself. So now I've adopted this. I've worn it on myself. This is the second or third bottle that I've gone through. I think it's the perfect balance of the gourmand. So it's slightly cinnamon. And then it has that leather note that is so strong in this. It's woody, it's spicy, it's masculine, but it's also uh, really warming. Are you ready for the scent profile? Christmas day, 2019, you just baked a giant peach cobbler. So that's sitting in a casserole dish or some hot plate in your car and you can smell it as you're warming the car up. It's snowy outside and you also have like a jug of mulled wine to bring to this party that you're going to with all your friends. They're gonna put on a record full of Hawaii, like luau music. It's gonna be just completely decadent and there are gonna be too many cookies and it's gonna be a bacchanal. As you're waiting for this party to commence, you reach into your coat pocket for your glasses and lo and behold, instead of your glasses is a melted candy wrapper. And now you have the sticky Werther's Originals stuck to your hands, um, maybe a little bit of hazel that chocolate in there and you're like ah there you go and finally tom ford fucking fabulous so this is a really expensive bottle it is matte black it is gimmicky i mean the name itself if you're going to name something this people are going to want to know what it smells like regardless um and it does have that black totem top. I feel like these are like chess pieces. Maybe I'm still on my Queen's Gambit kick. I don't own any of Tom Ford's like decanters or any of the other uh, ones that are like Black Orchid or the ones that come in the flask, the ribbed flask. I actually really prefer this kind of packaging. Now everything is black, even as I mentioned with that Dolce & Gabbana one, you can see that the spritzer itself had a little white eye. This one is all black, so it's not a given. Everything is a choice, I guess. Um, and I really appreciate both of them in their own right. This one is so heavy on the leather and it is woody. It's, it's highly masculine. It doesn't feel like a skunky, deep, musky smell. It's still a warm hug. It's still a encapsulating smell. So if I'm going to give this a scent profile, I would say, imagine if you will, Atlas, the guy who shoulders the world literally in mythology. He is seeing the state of the world right now, taking it off of his shoulders and just giving it a giant hug. It feels like there's a strength to it. There's like a mystical quality to it. It is kind of masculine, but 
again, it's all about that like warm hug. Leather and skin and the fact that leather is skin, but it's been treated and buffed and it's polished to a high shine, like the world and the marble that it is, the marble and the marvel that it is, it feels like it's a grand scent. Like this is a really large grand scent. It's not going to trail around the room too much. It's not going to stand out and make your partner cough. That's a bit stoic too. So it's not like a grandmother's hug, but it's something a little bit more respectful or like between two acquaintances who respect each other greatly, just like Atlas and the world. See how I brought it all back together right at the end there. So folks, that is it. Thank you so much. If you have made it to the end of this video, you have now sat through 18 different perfume descriptions. If you enjoyed any of this, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know um, how I could improve this video. I really want to be able to give you the inventory of my stuff, maybe year to year, but also share what I what I have and what I like. It's all a personal preference, of course, but hopefully a little, a little bit of my scent descriptions have helped you gain a little understanding of maybe these blends that are so complex and so beautiful. Um, and it's really hard now during the pandemic to go through and find fragrances or discover new things that you like without going out um, and testing them in person. I'm glad you're not doing that necessarily, but um, hopefully this is giving you a glimpse into maybe a, a list of fragrances you want to try. I hope you will join me on my next few videos and I will see you again soon. Adios. You got me upside down Should only feel this much